Welcome back. Today we're doing five things to do when you're bored. Before we start, please subscribe. Also, please share and like this video. Thank you. To start off this video, we are going to make pom-poms. To make a pom-pom, you need yarn, you need a comb, you need scissors, and you need a garbage can. Start by wrapping the yarn around your fingers 20 to 30 times. Also, if you feel like this video isn't very vivid or it's just not working, I do have this video on my channel. Please check it out and while you're at it, subscribe, share, and like. Also, I suggest wrapping the yarn around two to three of your fingers. Now you are going to cut the yarn around your fingers for the pom-pom away from the other yarn. After that, you can take the string off of your fingers. Just be careful to make sure it doesn't unravel. Then cut a seven inch piece of yarn. Now you do not have to cut it the exact length, just about. Now tie the seven inch piece of yarn around the middle of the yarn for your pom pom. As you can see, I had quite a struggle making sure that I tied the seven inch piece of yarn around my yarn ball now make sure that it is very very tight because if this comes undone your pom-pom comes undone now take your scissors and start cutting the loops now take your garbage and do this over your garbage the only reason i didn't is because otherwise you wouldn't really be able to see it and it was a little bit of a struggle make sure you go through and make sure that there are absolutely no loops that have not been cut you might find some later and that's all right, just make sure that you cut them. Now take your comb and start combing your pom-pom. This step is unnecessary. I definitely suggest it though because it's what really makes it look like a pom-pom. Also, be careful when you do this because you want to get it really fluffy, but yet you don't want to like pull the strings up because you're doing it so hard. I, I kind of had a rhythm of just striking it and then going back and forth you definitely have to be careful with this so i suggest doing it over a garbage because otherwise you have a bunch of fluffies on your floor and that is what your garbage is for well i like to roll the pom-pom in my hands just to get it a very round shape it, it just seemed to help um that's totally up to you though you do not have to do that um also make sure that you trim afterwards after you've combed everything because then you actually get a round ball instead of this big fluffy everywhere pom-pom by the way trimming and fluffing this pom-pom does take a while i am going to skip most of it though because otherwise that would be super boring just watching me do it over and over and over and over again Here is the finished pom-pom. I hope you like it because it took hours of trimming and cutting and combing. So I hope you like it and do it yourself. The second thing we're gonna do is make a bow out of wrapping paper. This is really simple because all you need is wrapping paper and tape. Also, you do need scissors to cut it out. So basically what you do is you get a rectangle, piece of wrapping paper depending on what size you want it and make sure you cut it the right size and you trim it up really nice now you're gonna like scrunch it in the middle try to be careful when you scrunch it as you see i did that uh because wrapping paper is a little bit finicky also you can do this with like felt or just a fabric it's up to you then you will cut a small piece of wrapping paper and roll it up. Now you tie it around there as you can see I did and you will cut off the excess and tape it. Once you've taped your bow, you're completely done. And that's how you make a super easy, simple, anytime bow. Also, I do have a complete video on this. Number three is make a polymer clay rose. Now, of course, I'm using polymer clay. I'm pretty sure you can use just regular clay. I would suggest the air dry clay, although some clays are like too crumbly and just don't work for what we're doing here. 
of course, the first thing you need to do here is knead your clay because it softens it and makes it easy to work with. Once you've kneaded your polymer clay well, you can start splitting it into pieces. I suggest between 5 and 10 pieces, but it's totally up to you. That's just what I suggest. If you don't know how to get very even pieces, what I like to do is I like to roll it and then I will like split in half and split in half again. That's just how I do it, but it's totally up to you. Also, if you feel like you need further instructions or it just doesn't seem to be working, I do have a full video on making a polymer clay rose on my channel. While you're at it, subscribe, share, and like this video. When you're making these balls, do not look for perfection. You do not have to roll these balls for five minutes each. They can have a little bit of blemish and they do not have to be imperfect. They could be part rectangle and they would still work just fine. Once you have all of your balls, take a hard flat surface, for example, a book, and push these down until they are very thin. You don't want them to be like super thin, but you do want them to be about a millimeter thin. Once you have all of your balls smushed down, take all of them and find the two smallest. Twist them around each other as you see I am doing. Then take the third smallest and wrap that around again and etc. Also, you can take the tip of each petal and push it back a little bit. This is totally up to you. It's unnecessary, but I think it opens up the rose and makes it look a little bit better. It's totally up to you though. After going over this and adjusting it to my liking, I am done. This is really simple and I hope you like it. Number four is make peanut butter blossoms. First, you need half a cup of peanut butter. Then you need a fourth a cup of maple syrup or honey. Now add a fourth a cup of protein powder. If you don't have protein powder, use either oatmeal or powdered sugar. I would suggest oatmeal because it does the same effect as protein powder. It dries it out and it does not have much taste. If you want to use powdered sugar, now mix everything you can. It just makes it a lot no sweeter. Texture. Also make sure that you stir up the contents on the bottom. Now I'm adding a fourth a teaspoon of salt to this. Now you don't have to add salt, I just did because a lot of recipes say to. I do not personally think that it makes a difference, but that's totally up to you. I'm also adding half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, which is also unnecessary, but totally up to you. Now stir your batter again if you added the salt and vanilla extract. Now grab a plate and start rolling your batter up into balls. Once you've rolled your batter into balls, you can start adding the chocolate chips. Now I know this will sound ridiculous, but I messed around with methods on putting the chocolate chips on top of your blossoms. The first way I tried was indenting my finger into the balls but my chocolate chips were too small for the indents. So I ended up just taking the chocolate chips and pushing them into the batter. Now, if you do have really big chocolate chips, you can use the indent method. It's totally up to you. Here are the finished peanut butter blossoms. Now you do not have to bake these, all you have to do is keep them in the refrigerator so that they stay good. Number five is make chocolate covered pretzels. All that you need for this is pretzels, chocolate, and a candy cane if you want. First you take the candy cane and you smash it into little pieces. 
then you lay your pretzels out on parchment paper. I had my parchment paper on a tray so that I could move it around, but that is optional. Now take your chocolate and melt it at 30 second intervals. Some chocolate takes longer to melt, some doesn't. Also, you can use either white or brown chocolate. It's up to you. I definitely think that the white is sweeter, but some people have different tastes. Also, when you melt the chocolate, make sure that you take it out and stir it around. Sometimes you need to melt it again, sometimes you don't. You just have to make sure that you get it nice and smooth and there are no chocolate chunks in there. Now I'm melting the white chocolate, same thing as the dark chocolate. You can do both white chocolate and dark chocolate, it's up to you. Now dip your spoon in chocolate and start flicking it over the pretzels. Make sure that each pretzel gets enough chocolate. Also, make sure that you add the candy cane right after the chocolate is done. Now I'm adding the candy cane. If you didn't smash up a candy cane, of course, you are not going to do this. But if you do feel like adding something special, but yet you don't want to smash up a candy cane or you don't have it, you can add something like M&M, although it is chocolate on top of chocolate. 